Hello YouTube, Newsletter Report Newsletter, and Tutor Program subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Right here, and today is December 17th, 2019. And this is the Mystery Report number three. A few things I'll show you for those uh, following Black Star Research that uh, finally got these affiliate ads things fixed. Um, people are writing, complaining that none were working. Everything is, uh, looks like it's up and going again. Everything's doing fine. Finally got time to do that. So I want to get back over here to the, uh, get back over here to the newsletter. A lot happened this week, and I didn't get banned, like uh, from previous weeks. It's a little lesson behind the lesson of what we're uh, focusing on this week. Remember the first newsletter? was about the two Gospels of the New Testament. The next one's the two churches of the New Testament. Now the third one, if you go to the website, see the four baptisms of the New Testament? That's what we're covering this week. Go down to the scripture section right here. There's where we started. This is where we were last week. This is where we are this week. So in this week, I'm going to be making clarifying statements for those that argued against the two churches of the New Testament from last week. And if there's any Anybody that wants to uh, debate the original topic, then that's in this newsletter too. So that's the um, way the program is working. That's the way it's starting off. Begin right at the top here, going through all these sections. We may, may even do, before we jump into the Mystery Explained, we may look at the uh, Born from Above versus the New cre uh, Creature and Spirit and Soul answers that was written for Bonnie. That uh, video was made for bo both the videos. These were videos made for Savannah and for Bonnie. It seemed to me that they helped people to then read my book, The Mystery Explained, with a better foundation. That's really what we're doing here, is building a good foundation, going through this, and starting with the most basic gospel. So when I'm saying the gospel, we know what we're talking about. And the church, are we talking about the kingdom church, Peter? Peter, John, and James belong to, or the body of Christ church that Paul, Barnabas, and Titus belong to. Four baptisms, that's where, where uh, my primary post for this week. And then I'm going to get into the news of the antics of what went on over at the forum. A little bit uh, to write on that. Hopefully there's not as much of that kind of news moving forward. But the, uh, the common denominator of what I can see is that the time is getting short. The the way that the, the those blinded by denominationalism, they're becoming monsters on these, they're administrators, they're moderators. They see one thing. They think that's it. That's the answer. And they're wrong. They're dead wrong. And then they hide this work, my work that separates everything. Now I'm the heretic. That's the way that it works. Mainstream, lamestream boards. When you go out on the internet, I did this for years and years and years been a member at this board right here grace Center since 2006 to give you an idea the the uh, christian forums board they're still in the process of banning me they may not um, I, it's, it's like i've been placed in the corner over here <laughs> I have to get a ticket number and then they decide if they're gonna you know let you continue or whether they're gonna lop your head off so um here's another thing that i want to report on see this uh waken radio series John sent in number three for this third newsletter. So this is the first one that I ever did with Donna Devane over at Awakened Radio. This is back in 2012. And then here's the number two, the number three. John went through and downloaded these years ago. And then he's edited them. He edited it out because I would start this hour-long presentation with the Black Star Update Report. He cut all that out. So it's just the scripture part. So... That's a bonus. This is going to, I think he said he has 37 or 38 of them. So every week he's going to be sending me new, this is the new stuff. And this stuff's not outdated. There's nothing that I would change. What's written in the book, this was, um, this is 2012. So it was, uh, the Mystery Explained was written in 2005. This was uh, almost a decade after it was written. And the, now the Mystery Explained was published in 2017. Still wouldn't change. Wouldn't, wouldn't change it. 
So uh, this is the topic for this week, and some are going to think that this stuff looks um, looks like I need to give you a link right here. If, if you want to go register at this board, you see I got a little thing off here already. So this is the link right here, the open and post link. Do I have that pulled up for you so you can see how that is? We're going to get to uh, more of this in a minute, but would look at where we are right here and notice that we're in the non-traditional theology board my topics I'm gonna to get into that here in just a second I've been getting the runaround by one of these um, moderators he's blinded by denominationalism he's got the two Gospels mixed together he's got his works he's baptized into the body of the Antichrist and he's doing the Antichrist bidding so um, these topics right here, see there's two of them. These have been on this board, in this theology, on this theology board since 2006. So I, I was able to update them because the rules say do not start another topic if there's already one started. So I went back 2006 and updated it a little bit, you know, spruced it up, put a diagram in there, and reposted it. Well, this guy right here, his name's Jared. He decided he didn't like that idea. He had, so he, he told me to go and start these over again, start them brand new. So he locks them. Nobody can reply on them. So that's what I do. Here they are right here. <laughs> two Gospels and the uh, two churches right here. So what does he do? He reads them and the scathing, scathing stuff that this guy wrote. He never quotes me. I'm going to show it to you here in a second but his because the guy cannot debate he cannot debate with me not even close he doesn't even try he just attacks he does it's a food fight thing he just throwing hurling things at me insults and all kinds of things and he's a moderator he's a moderator if he wants to debate the topics is supposed to log out of his mod account and into his member account moderators are not supposed to debate with members and they're supposed to use the regular names which he did he did that part right but using the wrong account but anyway whenever he had no case and he, there's nothing he could do what does he do he locks he locks my threads my topics that I started and he moves them moved it's been moved to the non-traditional board so now I'm just going to start writing in this uh, So this is the theology forum. Let me see if I can get back over there. Let's see, non-traditional. See, this is a subforum. You know, you're very. You're not even going to find people that's that's in here. So this is where you would go to find my topics. Now it's in the non-traditional part, but at least I didn't get banned this week. But what this shows you, whenever you write, you divide the text and you show the differences between the gospel of the kingdom and our in our word of the cross gospel message that they're totally separate they are totally separate then that's the kind of thing to get you banned it got me banned from three sites where these Christians they, they're like Pharisees they can't they don't have an answer for it they're blocking the door and they don't want anybody else to go in either that's what Christ railed against the Pharisees and the scribes the lawyers and the hypocrites he addresses them all I pulled up those verses for you here in the newsletter so I'm going to show you Get back over there in just a second. This is where I'm not going to run to another site. This is where I've been a member a long time. They decided to put me in non-traditional. Oh, huh. something else that I was going to that I didn't even mention in my commentary here, but I want to show you. See, this is the four. This is the four gospels. I mean, the four baptisms. Look, moderated. Oh, th this was. Uh, this said watched just a little while ago. This is where they put little warnings, little snide. Uh, you're being watched. This just changed yesterday from I'm being watched to now I'm being moderated. The thing is, whenever a board does practices like this, the things that you're going to realize is, is that there's just not a lot of activity. It's a really slow board. What do you mean I'm, on, I'm being watched? What do you mean I'm being moderated? When you look down the board, then you'll see that you, you're going back to last week just right down here. 
there's not a lot of activity. There's 12 guests and just a few members in here. But whenever you over, you, you push this guy right here, the global moderator is pushing his view. He can't defend his view. He can't debate it. He can't lay out the doctrinal precepts. He doesn't probably even know what that means. But if somebody says something he don't like, that's, a, that's what he said to me, and I'll show it to you here in a minute. What I don't like is this and this and this. So it's personal pet peeves type thing. He doesn't know that he is destroying himself by doing this. There's a spiritual operation that's going here. We're doing things already done. This is the way he blocked the way in the infinite realm. We're redoing these things all, all over and over again. That places me in the position of the persecuted. Just like in the infinite realm. You're persecuted there, you're persecuted here. It's not, it's not the type of mantle that you want to carry, but it's the one that you have to carry. That's what makes you worthy of the glory that's coming because we suffer right along with Christ. This is the stripes that we wear. I'm a pretty tough guy. And so, I mean, this, this is no big deal. Way worse this happened than, than this. But I'm pointing out that when you stand up on, a, on something and then you're proclaiming the truth, God's word, the correct way, there's going to be somebody right there to knock you down. That's just the way it goes. Get back over, over here. So let's focus for a minute here on the primary topic focus of this week. And I encourage you guys to go to that website. I'm not going to get a lot of action on these posts when they're in that sub form. So the, the way that, in other words, you're not going to have board members coming in and voicing their their views one way or the other and so that I can write clarifying statements. That's the purpose of putting it out of sight and out of mind in a sub form like that. Moving it out of the primary theology form. So you can go to this board right here and you can sign up and you can write me on these topics if you want more clar clarification. So we did the two Gospels. Last week we did the two churches, and I, later after I make this presentation, then I'm going to show you my defending statements at, whenever people wrote against me and how I handled that. Because just presenting this information is not necessarily going to help you see it. It's whenever people come in with their objections and the way that I handle the, the defending, you know, defending my position with clarifying statements, that's what helps you to connect more of the dots. So there's the link. I just showed it to you. So readers can read the two Gospels of the New Testament here, and that link has kept changing because they keep moving me around. And then the two, this is the way I like to do it. So next week we're going to talk about, what is it, the uh, differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. That's going to be right here, and then you're going to have four, uh, three of these. these so the, the first one helps you to understand the second one, helps you understand the third one. See how we're building precept upon precept. Begin with Gospels, then the churches, then the baptisms. And then we want to know the difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. Real important. Then the difference between God, the Almighty, and my Father who art in heaven. Because some people think they're the same. And some people are going to throw you down in the dungeon because you're saying they're, they're different. Real important, though. And then whenever we're discussing the deeper things in the mystery explained, we'll have all the semantics pushed right out of the equation. Because we'll all be on the same page. And if you have objections, this is the time whenever you bring them up before we move on. Okay, so let's begin right here at the top. Um, greetings to all. This study is dedicated to deliberations on the differences between the four baptisms of the New Testament connected to the two Gospels and the two churches of the New Testament from previous discussions. There are three baptisms for the Gospel of the Kingdom and just one baptism for Paul's Word of the Cross Gospel message. And what people generally do is they're going to take Paul's one baptism from Ephesians 4 or 5 and say, well, that's water baptism. And the other one's really, you know, they're, they're just all the same thing. They can't tell you why that's the way that it is, why they're misinterpreting, why they're mixing doctrinal precepts from two different gospel messages together. They don't even see the two gospel messages. So in order to reconcile things, then they just twist and push the square peg right into the round hole. So this is the account. This is one of the best accounts, and this, I, I lead off with it. Remember that these posts were written more than a decade ago. 
This was the decision that I made in trying to help people see the light on what God's wisdom entails, what it contains, and the way that this understanding helps set you free from, from denominationalism. Once you see it and people start telling you those other things, you'll, you'll see right through it right away. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. That's the key. So this gospel of the kingdom is a gospel of water. Water baptism. The way that you have sins forgiven. The water is part of the water witness. That it is. The word of the cross, Christ shed blood, is forgiveness of sins. Remember we just, just we, we went through that last week. So let's look at this account. This is from Acts 19. And here's the Apostle Paul. It happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus and found some disciples. Notice that they are disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, No, we have not heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. That's baptism number one. Paul said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, baptism number two. And when Paul had laid hands on them, and the Holy Spirit came to them, came on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, baptism number three, and they began speaking with tongues and prophecy. Three baptisms of the gospel of the kingdom are all included in this passage in chronological order. From the Father, from the Son, and from the Holy Spirit. Three baptisms from Matthew 28, 19. Three baptisms depict passage or the way there's all the verses that describe the way that talk about the way the way is a sect of jews the the phrase is speaking of the way through the three sections of the tabernacle of moses in the temple and we can uh i wonder what happens when i just click on this if we can look at this Let's allow this action to see what happens. I have to pull this. Okay, here we go. I'll try to get this on the page better for you. Well, anyway. This is the one of the diagrams from my book, The Mystery Explained. This shows how scripture is spirit, blood, and water. That's what I'm talking about. And there's a book of Acts. It's the veil book right here. And this veil is invisible. It's John the Baptist. It's Elijah. It's this mystery witness of the scriptures. People are trying to figure out the identity to that Christ says that he already came, but they didn't recognize him. That's the guy that's right there. The last two verses of the Old Testament include his name. And then you start off in Mark 1. And it's the same guy stepping through this veil that's right here. And this is the layout, just like a man, of the tabernacle of Moses. And the temple, and it's in the image of a man with a spirit, soul, and a body. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God who come, God who is, God who was. Like I showed you from the previous week. So three witnesses that tell us that these things are true. 30, uh, 39 books. 39 is 13 times 3. 13 is the number of the steward. Where do you get 13 from? Take Peter, John, and James and give each of them three witnesses. That's where the 12 comes from. The 9, 3, right? And then they get their 9. That's the 12. Take Christ and put them directly in the center. And you have the number of the steward, 13th. The 13th apostle. Spirit, blood, and water. Witnesses are all enfolded together in the Old Testament. That's why there's 39 books. 13 Pauline epistles within the two veils. This is where the mystery is revealed right here. People over here and the people over here, the Kingdom New Testament, they can't see in here. It's guarded by these veils. The 13 books of the... This is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and Hebrews through Revelation. The book of Acts is the veil book. The book, the book of Acts is unique to the Bible in that it has qualities of both the Kingdom and of grace. It has blue parts and red parts. The only book in the Bible that's like that, although some of the Pauline epistles include some 
kingdom doctrine because he's addressing members like in the Corinthian church. There are those that are of, of Cephas, that are of Peter, that are of Paul, right? Because that's the person who baptized them in water. The gospel of the kingdom has those three baptisms. Whoever gave them John's baptism, they consider themselves to be of that person. But mixed in the two port uh, city church, the, Cor the Corinthian church was the largest church of all. And it had members of both dispensations. So you see Paul addressing the members of the kingdom bride also in his letter to the Corinthians. That's an invisible veil that's put there on purpose to test the members of Christ's body. Trying to mix everything together. Whenever that's not what we're supposed to do. We have to rightly divide things. We have to recognize the differences between Christ's water ministry and his blood ministry. So this way is through the sections of the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. That was the first diagram. There's another one here you guys can check out. For um, disciples, um, for the disciples of the prophetic kingdom bride, that's church number one. That's right there. For us, there is one body, there's one spirit, just as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is over all, through all, and in all. And those that want to make the Lord, Jesus Christ, into God, <laughs> the Lord is right here. There's only one Lord. Everybody should know who he is, our Lord Jesus Christ. But the one God and Father who is above all, through all, and in all is his Father. The God that sent the Son into the world to save sinners. I'm sure we'll be looking at that debate somewhere down the line. People trying to create, make an idol out of the Son of God. They want to make, they, they say he's, he's God and he's a man. No, he's not either. He's something between God and man. The Son of God. Scripture describing three separate, separate baptisms in the first series that we just read. These events become more dramatic when we realize they occur six years after Peter and Paul's meeting in Jerusalem. So this is about 56 A.D. whenever that event happens. The kingdom disciples traveled the countryside for 25 years with only the baptism of John. Then, after hearing the good news about Jesus Christ and his coming, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then after that, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit by the laying of hands. See, those are works. Water baptism is a work. Laying hands, that's a work. Our one baptism has no works whatsoever. Preaching, hearing, believing. It's that simple. Salvation by grace through faith apart from works. It's the differences between, some of the differences between the gospel of the kingdom and our word of the cross gospel message. So the writer of Acts, which we know is Luke, is quoting Paul here in describing three individual and completely separate baptisms for the gospel of the kingdom. This is in full agreement with Christ's great commission commands to the disciples. Go therefore and make Disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, that's water baptism, and the Son in the name of the Lord Jesus, and laying a hand, hands for the Holy Spirit. Those are three separate ministries, all put together, right, for the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. And Christ said, he said, that you can, uh, you can get over on me. But you cannot get over on the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. That's because the third offering of the gospel of the kingdom came by the Holy Spirit. That would be strike three. This is where uh, the Great Commission is being sent. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. There's only one gospel in town at this time. It's the gospel of the kingdom. If Jared, Jared's never going to see that. The guy that's banning, trying to ban me, he wants to. He's got me on moderated. If that's just one foot out the door. He's ready to give me the boot right now. Because he's got the gospel of the kingdom, water baptism, laying of hands with the Holy Spirit. He's got it all into one gospel. And he thinks that's real in separating the two gospels to eliminate the works from Paul's gospel, from our gospel. That's the truth. But he doesn't see it. Those blinded up by denominationalism mix everything together and pull out what tastes good to them. That's why there's so many different denominations and one truth. So these three separate baptisms, so you have to take the time to give you the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Show you in Acts, in the Acts 19, where that comes in. 
Then here's another example. This happens earlier on with Philip. The, see the good news about the kingdom of God? That's the gospel of the kingdom. But when they believed Philip preaching the good news about the kingdom of God, which is the gospel of the kingdom, right there, it's just using different words. And the name of the Lord Jesus, they were baptized, men and women alike. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, which is gospel of the kingdom, they send them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. See, they haven't received the Holy Spirit yet. They've only had the baptism of John in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they got the first two. They're waiting for the third one. It says here, for he had not yet fallen upon them. They had simply been baptized. See, that's the water baptism. In the name of the Lord Jesus is the second baptism. So when they were laying hands on them, baptism number three, then they were receiving the Holy Spirit. Here's an account. The first account in Acts 19 showed people for 25 years, disciples, 25 years, didn't have the second baptism, didn't have the third baptism. They hadn't made it all the way to the Holy of Holies to become a member of the way. The way through the tabernacle is what the characterization of that is. And these had the first two and just needed the third. We should. This exercise is to help you see the differences in the three baptisms that are associated with the gospel of the kingdom. There's my commentary saying pretty much what I just said. Passed between the three baptisms. They, lots of time can pass and you could only have one or two of the baptisms until you finally got the third one to become a member of the way. So, is there, um, I generally don't ask questions because it divides your reading audience. But in a debate, that's what you want to do. Thing to realize. I usually wait to ask the question at the very end. Is there just one baptism, as Paul tells the Ephesians, or three baptisms, like Paul tells the kingdom disciples in Acts 19? It seems confusing, doesn't it? The answer is that there are three baptisms for the kingdom disciples, church number one, obeying the gospel of the kingdom, and just one baptism for the body of Christ. Called to God be a gospel number two. You can find just one baptism of the Holy Spirit described in the Gentile epistles. The first chapter to the Corinthians contain, um, of the Corinthians contains examples of Paul baptizing in water because that two-part city church had members from both the kingdom, and the grace administrations. That's the thing to realize. These administrations, they are different households. Israel, the flesh, and the Old Testament, different household. God deals with members of different dispensations in different ways. There's such a thing as eternal truth in Scripture that's true for everybody. Like God is love. And there's this dispensational truth that applies to one particular dispensation like Mosaic law. Gentiles are without the law. The, Moses was given, the law was given through Moses to Israel. All right. Well, Moses is the steward of Mosaic of the over Israel, dispensing the prophets and the law. Paul is the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. It doesn't put Moses or Paul above Christ or above God or anybody else. A steward is a slave that is chosen to be over the other slaves. Like our shop steward, I was, I was in the union as a bricklayer. We had a shop steward. Doesn't make, you know, he's the slave. He's still a worker like us, but he is the one elected to be the slave over the rest of the slaves, if you will. That's, that's the thing that Paul is. He is the steward, the dispensation of God's grace. There were things revealed to him that wasn't revealed to anybody else. Only after Christ was uh, raised from the dead. That's how God kept the secret from Satan, by keeping it in himself until it was revealed to Paul through a series of revelations that came through Jesus Christ. You can't take Jesus Christ out, out of the picture. He's the one mediator. Our access to God is only through the one mediator. There is no other access for us to God except we're through his son. That's the only way. So I'm being a little defensive there because that's what the Jared was trying to say. I was putting, I'm going to show you that in a minute. I was trying to put Paul, Paul over a lot of people have argued that with me over the years. They just don't understand the significance, the importance of having a steward like Moses. They're not able to make the connection. So this is what Paul writes. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him. This is the one baptism. 
sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who was given as a pledge of our inheritance, with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. Here's another verse. For even as one body, for even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we, church number two, the brethren, were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. This is the one Spirit, is the Holy Spirit, baptizes us into Christ's body. The thing is, it's not laid out in its complete form here, but we're not just baptized into Christ's body. We're baptized into Christ's body on the cross at Calvary, so that when he dies, we die with him. That's what liberates us from sin and the penalty, because we're already judged. God baptizes us into Christ. This is the mystery of Christ. God baptizes us, using the Holy Spirit, into Christ's body on the cross, so when he dies and goes into the earth, we go with him. Whenever God raises him from the dead, he raises us with him. This is the newness of life thing, the new nature that we have that's born inside of us. It's no, under, no longer under the penalty. It was never under the law, but now it's, it's under the law of Christ. It's under the law of this grace that we have. This makes us different, a different household than those saved by the gospel of the kingdom, baptized by water. What's the difference in water and blood? You guys know which is thicker. Which is thicker? Christ shed blood is thicker. It's better to be called to become a member of Christ's body than to be a member of the kingdom bride. They're going to work and work and work, toil away. They're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb to earn the right to join us in Christ. And when they get finally in there with us, they're going to realize that we've been there a long time and we're mature and that they're at an extreme disadvantage. And they're going to be made jealous to the ages of the ages over this. They don't even know enough to know Israel today. Even members of the kingdom bride like Peter, John, and James, they don't realize enough today to know to be jealous. But as time goes on, we're judging the world and the angels. The ages are going by. They're joining us in Christ. At the end of every age, there's a marriage supper of the Lamb where those are working marriage rituals, cleaning their garments, earning the right. They're getting in. And whenever they get in, they look up and they see us. We're glorious beyond glory, beyond glory. And we earned it for free by obedience to the gospel because God chose us for that. Okay, for you all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ, for all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. So this is another aspect of the mystery. Whenever God looks at you, he sees Christ. Because you're baptized inside of his body. Because if he didn't baptize us inside of his body and deal with us as he's dealing with us in Christ, then he would destroy us all. This is the provision God made. Because unrighteousness can't stand before God without being destroyed. It's impossible. Unless he puts us inside of his son and Christ paid the price for us, the debt. He paid for it. God made him pay for it. That's what he sent him to do. That's the mystery of the gospel, though, that Paul writes about. A lot of people can't see it. They really can't see it. That our one baptism puts us in Christ so that we participate. we even seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus because that's what God did with him. So under, And it's called, Paul calls it, my gospel. And that's what it is. It was given to him through a revelation of Jesus Christ. We we're baptized in the body on the cross at Calvary the moment we believe. The moment we believe, everything changes. It's through the power of God, through Paul's gospel, that we become active participants in his death, burial, and resurrection. So that's a characterization. When Paul says, my gospel, that's because it was given to him through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Nobody else ever conceived of what was being shared with Paul. The word gospel, there's no word translated into gospel in the Old Testament from the Hebrew or the Aramaic. It doesn't exist. Something old brand new. God kept his secret in, uh, hidden inside of himself until after Christ was raised from the dead. That's how he tricked Satan. By offering the gospel of the kingdom so Satan would kill the king. And it worked. Paul writes, Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? That's on the cross. Therefore, we have been buried with him in the tomb through baptism 
into death, three days in the tomb, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, from the tomb, through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. And these emphasis need to be made because people, whenever it says baptizing in Christ, they see water. Water, water, water. It's This doesn't take us back to the Jordan River. This takes us back to the cross. There's no water there. Remember, you ask for water, what do you get? Sour wine, vinegar. And that is part of them. I mean, there's more than one reason for what, why God did that. But one of it is so that you realize water has nothing to do with our one baptism into Christ. Nothing to do with it. Those that are putting it in there are grabbing doctrinal precepts from the gospel of the kingdom. Adding works to our gospel, making it a false gospel. That's the tool. They are tools, and that false gospel is the tool of the devil. Giving people a heavenly way to go straight into the lake of fire. I'm not even going to say into hell. The lake of fire is a million times worse than hell. For you are sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, were close yourself with Christ. You notice, this is Christ Jesus said of Jesus Christ. We're going to get into that. Why there, there is a difference and why Paul is the only one that's going to talk to him about it, as Christ Jesus. All of these words above take us back to the cross, not to the Jordan River. There's no water. That's what I was just telling you. And then here's the, the, the beautiful part right here. And there's no water in any of them. As members of his body, we died with him on the cross. We were buried in his tomb and raised with him to be seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Whenever the, those of you want a little preview, go watch my video from the scripture section. But read this very carefully, word by word, and you're going to realize that we are seated with him, with Jesus Christ. With him and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ has been seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus and us with him. Because Christ Jesus is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a giant heavenly man. That's different than Jesus Christ walking around on the earth. The Lamb of God incarnate on the earth. Okay, so Paul's one baptism into Christ's body is nothing like the three baptisms of the gospel of the kingdom. And they are to be understood totally separate from each other. Paul is seeing, preaching, the three baptisms um, to the kingdom disciples in Acts 19 because he preached both the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. And then you're going to... I think I want to click on this one too. A lot of people don't realize this. And they read right by this and they don't realize what it says. So let's read exactly what it says and let me help drive this point home. Paul is speaking and he says, But I do not consider my life to be of any account as dear to myself, so that I may finish my course in the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. This is our gospel that we preach today. And then he, he goes on to say, and the ministry that he received through a revelation. Remember he went down to, in Galatians 1, 11 and 12, he went down to submit the gospel. Well, the first of all, 1, 11 and 12, is he received the gospel through a revelation of Jesus Christ. And then who's, who do you think he goes and submits it to? Galatians 2. He goes down and submits the gospel that he preaches among the Gentiles to Peter, John, and James. Because they didn't know about it. In 50 AD, that's almost... That's a decade and a half after Christ's resurre um, resurrection and ascension. Fifteen years go by. Peter doesn't know about this. Some people want to give Peter credit for preaching our gospel whenever Paul had to rebuke him. And he says, so Paul goes on. This is near the, you know, getting towards the end of Acts. He says, now behold, I know that all of you, among whom I went about preaching the kingdom, will no longer see my face. Therefore, I testify you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I did not shrink from declaring you the whole purpose of God. Now what he's saying here is that the whole purpose of God concerns the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, which is not written here, but it's for gathering the body of Christ today. And preaching the kingdom. That's for gathering the kingdom of priests, the intercessors, those that stand on the sea of glass before the Lamb, 
See, we are gathered into the Lamb, members of the Lamb's body. Peter, John, and James, are they're serving in front of the Lamb. Revelation 7, start at 14. Those that came from the Great Tribulation are standing in front of the Lamb. Those that die during this coming day of the Lord are joining them in front of the Lamb. Two different bodies. They are a kingdom of priests. They intercede for everybody that's in heaven. People in heaven don't just come up to the Lamb and get judged or whatever. They get a priest that represents them like an attorney that comes with them and intercedes for them and says, look, this is the way it is. Now we're sitting in the Lamb doing the judging. We judge the world and the angels. Peter, John, and James are on the sea of glass being the attorney providing intercession. That's what the kingdom of priests does for everybody in heaven. The whole purpose of God is to set up the heavenly administration where everybody's judged. This is all about judgment. Right? So he's making the provision just like David's kingdom. Prophets on one side, priests on one side. David the king in the middle doing the judging. The priests bring those that are being accused in front and the intercessors do all the talking. Nobody that's in heaven actually speaks to the Lamb directly. They speak through the intercessors. That's what they're there for. Part of God's plan. That's the way that it works. Okay. Nothing like, nothing like, our one baptism is nothing like. Paul preaches them both. That messes people up so much. Because when Paul was first converted, there only was the gospel of the kingdom. So his practice, and when you read in Romans, is the only place he mentions is that he goes to the Jew first and then the Greek. What he's saying is he goes to the Jew first and he preaches the gospel of the kingdom, and then he goes to the Greek, preaches them, the, the uh, Gentiles and the Jews that are among them, because some of the Jews aren't practicing Jews. They're with the Gentiles. Well, they're the ones that heard the gospel of the grace of God. God called them to become members of Christ's body. So Paul has citizenship in both administrations. That's rare. Timothy had citizenship in both administrations too. That's why Paul circumcised Timothy. People wonder, well, why did why in the world will Paul sent whenever he's telling the Galatians that circumcision is nothing? Why is he t telling Timothy to be, to be circumcised? Because Timothy was called to become a member of both administrations, and he went and preached the gospel of the kingdom just like Paul did. And it was unlawful for someone uncircumcised to preach the gospel of the kingdom. They had to convert to Judaism. Because everybody, like Peter, John, and James, they have to keep the whole law. The only dispensation that is without the law, well, the Gentiles are without the law, but they're still judged by, like, the local law that you have downtown, the county that you live in, the state. The federal law, you still get judged by all of that if you're a Gentile. But whenever you're a member of Christ's body, whether you're a Jew or Gentile, all that's done. It's already paid for because you're already dead and you can only be judged once. Hebrews 9, 27. So applying these things to our seeming contradiction, there is one baptism for the members of the body of Christ today. And um, those who seek to enter the kingdom of God on earth as disciples in the coming dispensation, kingdom dispensation, shall be baptized three times in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was for this presentation, while well, it was the two Gospels and two churches, but it was because of showing you the differences that my post had to be moved out of sight and out of mind. So this is my weekly, uh, this is all brand new. So this is the week's events, you know, kind of characterized, summed up. And for the last few weeks, it's been where I've been banned and whatever, and being mistreated. And so this has been an eventful week. I've explained some of this, you, you know, to you guys already. Managed not to get banned, so that's pretty good. I just got, like, chastised, smacked around a little bit. So the rules say do not create a new topic. And I already started these two topics, so I was allowed to edit them, so I posted them. Um, one or two Gospels, one or two Churches. So then a time goes by. So here comes this guy, Wycliffe. And he says, please start a new thread. This one is ancient. Many of the prior participants are no longer here. So if I, I was darned if I do and if I'm darned if I don't type of situation. So he's the moderator. Happy to do that. Even though it breaks the rules, I'm happy to break the rules. That's what he tells me to do. So my two Gospels and two Churches threads, they had to be 
you know, he locked them up like I showed you. And then he tells me to start over. So I, I create new threads. So after I, after I create the new threads, then this is the same guy. See, he put his name here, Jared. And this, the, the, then answering my um, two gospels. Now let me just give you, a, let me see. I want to give you a, a little uh, refresher on what that looks like before I, let me see where we are here. We're in the theology forum. Now we need to go into non-traditional forum. The thing is, in the regular forum, all the messages that were written previously, even though they were written a decade ago, they all disappear. It's only the little love letter sent to me by Jared that appears. Then everything is transferred over to here. So here's the New Testament. On, oh boy, this one is sent today. I probably don't want to see what this guy's writing to me. Well, you see, moderated. So this is where I laid out the gospel of the kingdom, doctrine precepts. And this is where I say, this is not our gospel today. Then I show what my, our gospel. And you notice how they put these ridiculous ads all through. Oh, boy. Oh. So anyway, got the diagram. This is the offering of the Father. This is uh, John the Baptist, Christ and the Twelve, offering the gospel of the kingdom. Then Revelation 20, verse 4, this early reigns church is cut off. But they're raised with us to start the day of the Lord. And they rule with the Lamb for this thousand year period. Revelation 20 verse 4 has been the demise of so many people trying to place the Lord on the earth in an earthly kingdom when that was never his intention, ever. His kingdom is not even of this realm. The earth is his footstool. That's why he made the man. That's why he made Adam. To be on the earth while he does the same things in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven type of thing. So this is what he is responding to. My opening post. And the rules are supposed to be you do not attack people. You quote them and then you give your view one, one way or the other. You agree or disagree. Doesn't matter to me which way you go. This is what this guy writes to me. The moderator. The guy that wrote the rules. Well, he posted the rules anyway. Your theology is really conv convoluted. What a mess. You believe that God had multiple plans. Do you believe that God's first plan just failed then? Do you believe that God changed his mind? God says that he doesn't change. There's a lot of problems with this that spring to mind. But mostly, what I really, really... Look, he's got the little bold in there. Dislike about this is how it, it uh, de-emphasizes Christ and makes Paul a central figure. I question whether this even qualifies as Christianity anymore. It may actually be closer to what is this? Mer Merconiite? Mary, whatever. Heresy. That it is to Christianity. Oh, yeah, right. Because we're supposed to mix the gospel of the kingdom and the word of the cross together and just create our own gospel. Like denominations, right? Wrong. This represents a classic case of how you're not supposed to behave. You're not supposed to do this. You're actually, in the, in the on many boards, this post would be deleted. Because it doesn't quote anything from the post. It doesn't add anything to the debate whether you agree or disagree. So if you quote and say, oh no, it's one gospel. Here's the precepts. That's what you're supposed to do. Not voice your opinion about what you like and dislike. There's no de-emphasis of Christ any more than, than uh, Moses giving the law to Israel. What does that put Moses over the Lord God who gave him the law? No. Everything Paul received, he th received through revelation of Jesus Christ directly from God. That puts him to, as a as a steward over the rest of the slaves that are members of of the uh, dispensation of God's grace, this household that God created with our gospel. So then, uh, after I go through and make these new posts, which is a duplicate of what the two, the two threads that he just closed those threads have been in this main forum theology forum for more than a decade but then he decides and this is his answer this is what he writes and then he decides oh it's got to go this has got to go so he moves it to this other forum right there so th these are the the quotes 
It's just exactly like a Pharisee. And he thinks he's doing the right thing. The Pharisees back in Christ's day, the hypocrites, they thought they were doing the right thing too. They really did. The lawyers, the, all the ones that conspired to murder Christ, they thought they were doing the right thing because they didn't understand it. They're looking at Mosaic Law right over here and what John the Baptist says, that you, what do you mean you can forgive, have sins forgiven by water baptism? What do you mean? That's impossible. It has to be through the temple. You have to go to the priest. You've got to pay the money. And so John the Baptist had to be thrown in prison. Well, he was thrown in prison for making uh, statements about Herod and Herodias and their incestuous this and that and the other also. But um, this is what Christ hated. He really hated it. He says, but woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people. For you do not enter yourselves and you do not allow those who are entering to go in. So people that would like to see this discussion in the main forum, nope, push to the sub forum. Just a couple of posts below mine takes it back to June and July because nobody writes in there. So this is, uh, so his attitude, it's just, he says, whoa. He, he addresses Pharisees, hypocrites, right, and the lawyers. Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you hindered those who are entering standing right in the way a moderator is supposed to be in a neutral corner he's not supposed to take sides that's really important that's what the reason that the shoe fits as far as the pharisee because they were like the authority figure over israel like this guy is the authority figure over this board and when you go into the room you'll see that the rules are at the top do i have that pulled up not on this page. Do I have it pulled up on the other page? Let me see here. I think I'll be able to show you this. Right. Oh, Theology Forum. This is, yeah, the Theology Forum. And you see the rules right there? Look who wrote them. And when you go through and read the rules, you'll see that it states clearly not to do exactly what he did to me. So he's breaking the rules that is everybody else is supposed to follow. But because he's a Pharisee on this board, and he's allowed to break the rules. That double standard. This reminds me. I'm wondering if this guy is a uh, Hillary Clinton lefty Democrat. Like these house people are. As far as the political thing goes. this I'm being treated just like Trump it feels like. Trumped up charges. Sham. No, no substance to it whatsoever. And then the house democrats they want to have control in the house they're running the sham show the shift show the nadler show well they think that they're just going to go over and influence the senate too they, no you don't get it both ways it's around 50 percent on the um on the impeachment thing but it's because only the democrats have made their case the republicans haven't even started yet the defense is just now going to begin and it looks like going to be total vindication to me because the two articles that they i mean it, it says far more about the House Democrats, Pelosi, who's been two and a half years trying to impeach Trump, it says far more about her and Schiff than anything to do with Trump. And what this guy here did on this board says way more and more about what he about him. The rule breaker that wrote the rules, that posted the rules, it says far more about him than anything that I've done. Well, I, I thank everybody for writing and appreciate your. Uh, Taking the time to write and all that stuff. Being just nice to Miss Pie to everybody. Not good enough for this guy. So um, that's interesting what's going on this week. Go over there and register and write all my topics if you'd like an answer from me. And I'm generally getting there like on Sunday. Over the weekend. Once Black Star's wrapped up. I'm get, I get over there on Sunday. Monday I'm over there. Like yesterday. Because I'm, as I'm writing on these different topics, then I'm adding it as content for this weekly newsletter. So, Mr. Report supporters so far include Jonathan. This is in order, too. Jonathan, and then David, Kathy, Dr. Laura, Kenna, Dr. Deborah, Scott, and Care, and Galen. And I just found out, I just put two and two together, Galen, that you did join us in chat last Tuesday night. He also got his copy. Sorry, I didn't hold your... I'll try to do that before I upload this. Because you also purchased your numbered autograph copy of The Mystery Explained. 
And um, <clears throat> so whenever you guys come to chat and you have a different chat name, like Jonathan's, I think, is this John, all right? But I, I've known Jonathan since 2011, 2012, and he's been a, um, he was a member of, of my research group that was over there with hundreds of members. But whenever you come in and your name is, uh, you know, it's not Galen, you just choose your own name. Like my, mine's uh, terrell03.dot.com. You just pick a name. But make sure you let me know that's who you are. And if you right click on your own name, then I believe that you can change your name. You can. Ch it won't change your name in your settings, but for that session, it'll change your name so that you'll be Galen. Or you know, if you don't, if you want anonymity, anonymity, if you want to remain anonymous, then you know that's good and everything. But I might be talking to you as a Pal Talk member. And the Pal Talk members go room to room. So my, whenever I turn on the room, then it shows up on the religion board, right? Religious discussion board. And so other people might did, they'll just come in and they might ask a question and go out. So this is another tool to get more support. But you have to let me know, like uh, Kathy or Dr. Laura or Kenna, whenever you come in and you're under a different name, then all you have to say is, oh, yeah, this is Dr. Laura or this is Kenna, and then I'll Put two and two together at the start and realize who that I'm addressing. So, um, if you're watching this video, you obviously know about this channel. So, these guys that get the newsletter, they can attach this newsletter to a document and send it to anybody they want. It's those people that this is written to that they can go here and then sign up. Okay, my clarifying statements. The two Gospels of the New Testament, ERM, he's going to try to mount a charge. He says, they're the same gospel. He cannot see the difference, even though they have directly opposing doctrinal precepts. One's washed, baptism in water for the forgiveness of sins. One's Christ shed blood. All the way down the line, they are opposite. And he thinks they're the same. That's the way the deluding influence operates. It makes people see things that are not real. Okay, so this is my argument. I'm looking at my time. Not gonna be able to go through through all of this. When you, those of you who have the newsletter can, so I'm going to make I make the argument. He says this, and I say, wait a minute. They have directly opposing doctrinal precepts, and I try to show them the three witnesses. The gospel, of the kingdom, is for these guys. The word of the cross is for us. The the law and the prophets are for these guys, Israel. Three primary dispensations. Some people say, well, there's only uh, one dispensation, or there's only there's seven. No, there are thousands of them. You need to wake up. Cherubs, angels, archangels, all these different, Nephilim, all, the, all these different households God deals with differently. We are being dealt with as sons because we are members of Christ's body. Well, people outside of Christ's body, they're not, they don't get the benefits. Some people think, and it's, it's in, down in this newsletter that Mosaic law ended at the cross. It, Mosaic law didn't end at the cross. If Christ dying for sin saved everybody, then there's no sense in sending a gospel message and saving those who have obedience of faith. Some people obey the gospel and some people disbelieve the gospel. Some people can never believe it. Right? That's the way it works. The good It's attached to a good news message. So you're trying to apply Christ's blood just everywhere you want doesn't work. They have to obey the gospel. Whether the Jew or Gentile doesn't matter. There's no such thing inside of Christ. But it's addressed down here. I don't have time. You know, I want to get you guys out of here in a you know, reasonable time. The uh, And you can get your hands on a newsletter and then go through do everything de by detail. Two Gospels of the New Testament written by this Yeshua guy. He, he is a... Uh, uh, I'm trying to work out your timeline chart. I'm assuming we are at the blue part, waiting for the seven years of tribulation. Are you saying um, the return of Christ is the start or the end of the seven years? So he's looking over here, and our rapture's over here. We're taken to start the day of the Lord. The, day, the black star comes here. The black star comes again back here. This thousand years, day of the Lord, is quote-unquote so long as it takes, which is going to be about 3,600 years. 3,600 years between the Black Star crossing. It creates the destruction of 1 Thessalonians 5. It creates the destruction 
from Matthew 24 and Revelation 6. Back here. So the three explanations of the rapture, the pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, they're all wrong. Unless your pre-trib is 3,600 years before the tribulation, because the great tribulation is back here. That's after the gospel of the kingdom has gone to the whole world. The gospel of the kingdom doesn't even start getting preached till right here by Elijah. Coming to restore all things. That's what this part's about. Elijah appears to restore all things. Boom. It's that restored kingdom that gets destroyed, the restored temple that gets destroyed. There is no temple for Matthew 24 for the, for the uh, prince to set up his abomination of desolation. There's no place for it because the Antichrist lives in the hearts of men. The mystery of iniquity is at work now, not the literal coming that comes at the end of the age. So I'm trying to explain that to him and give him the example. And this is, he says, one more thing. What do you think about the baptism? No, you don't do that when you're debating. This is the two gospels thread. You talk about the two gospels, what's in the opening post. It's you either support it or, you, or you're against it. If you want to debate baptism, then you go to the four baptisms that I just posted. And that's what I was telling them. Hey, I, I hadn't posted that yet. But now go to that thread. So don't go to the four baptisms thread and, and expect I'm going to debate with you about the Gospels. Or about the churches. That's, see, there's different topics for that. Okay, and then he wants me to give a... Uh, a rebuttal against his view so he logs on on my gospels thread and then he, he I had to snip it off he says well this is how it works blah, blah 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 about the baptisms wrong topic right and we're not here to debate your view we're here to debate my view from the opening post you're what's standing in the opening post is what you're here to discuss what you need to do is direct me to your thread about the baptisms where you've made your case in the opening post. Then I will quote from that post and then go down underneath and then provide whether I agree or we disagree. And we debate that back and forth. Right? That's the way that it works. Two Gospels of the New Testament, Jared. This is where he's talking about my theology being convoluted. What a mess. And then so I just ask him, I say, please quote anything from the opening post that appears off and present your counter argument supported by Scripture. That's what he's supposed to do. Scripture clearly shows John the Baptist Christ are preaching. So this is where I give statements, supporting statements for what has already been shared. So I'm, here's the argument. This is showing preaching the kingdom just like I showed you guys in Acts uh, 20. Start at 24. He says the gospel of the grace of God here. And he says, oh, do you guys preaching the kingdom? I was preaching the kingdom. I'm not going to see you. You're not going to see me no more. That's the way it is. Because Paul was going strictly to the Gentiles by Acts 28, 28. That's exactly what he does. He kicks the dust off his heels. And he's, I'm going to the Gentiles. I'm not messing with you guys anymore. That's the close of Acts that happened between 60 and 61 AD. So you see Paul talking about the revelation of the mystery in Romans at the very end of the uh, chapter 16, because that chapter originally only had 24 verses. 25, 26, and 27 were added by Paul to his Antiochian manuscripts, the one that were, ones that were in Antioch. The ones that were, were copied and sent to Egypt, the critical text, they do not contain those last three verses. But it talks, it, he connects, the, he says, my gospel it's according to the revelation of the mystery. But he couldn't write about that until after the close of Acts. That's why it didn't appear. He was going to the Jew first and the Greek when he wrote the book of Romans around 59 AD, just before the close of Acts. Right? That's why Paul added at last. That's why there's disagreement between the critical text and the received text. Because of the timing. There's a lot to this of what's going on here. But this guy here, he says... Um, each of his concerns I'm going to answer for him. And he's not buying anything. So you believe God change, changes his mind. So I tell him, perhaps a good idea would be to start a topic on God changing his mind, which has nothing to do with the two Gospels or the two churches of the New Testament. And then I get right back on the topic. That's what you're supposed to do. See, what they're trying to do is to tangent, get, get you on a, a tangent, get you sidetracked, get the... That is exactly what the rules say not to do. And that's exactly what... He's breaking all the rules, in other words. He says, there's a lot of problems with this. And then uh, he says that I'm, I'm uh, D 
de-emphasizing Christ, making Paul the central figure. Presenting the doctrinal precepts, teaching the gospel of the kingdom, and the gospel of the grace of God in no way makes Paul anything other than the steward of the current dispensation of God's grace. The Lord God gave the prophets and the law through Moses in the Old Testament times, right? Did the Lord's selection of Moses to dispense the law place Moses over the Lord God through whom the law was given? No. There is only one person in the entire Bible that the Lord God characterizes as the chosen instrument of mine. To Ananias, who also failed to recognize the importance of Paul and his position as the steward. Now, this is what he says. This is the Lord speaking. To Ananias, he just railed against Paul and he said, Hey, do you know who this guy is? This is the guy, he's pointing fingers back to the previous chapters where Saul is receiving garments. He's a murderer. He's a murderer of people of the way. People of Peter, John, and James's church. He was killing them. And he drove, kicking against the goads. Paul, that's what the first thing Christ says. Why are you kicking against the goats? You know what that means? It means, why are you kicking against tradition? Paul was driving his horse in the middle of the day in the hot sun. Jews don't do that by practice. They're going to keep, they're going to go until about 11 o'clock. The sun gets high in the sky. They're going to stop. Well, the Spanish people are like that. If you've ever been to Spain, they have siesta. They sit under the tree. The sun goes over the hour, two hours, three hours. And then they get back on their horse and they keep riding. Not Paul. Paul driving his horse through the midday hot sun because he was going to kill him some kingdom disciples. He had letters from the Sanhedrin to do that. And that's what Ananias is saying. He says, wait a minute, do you know who this is? And then, but the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine. This is the only person in the entire Bible that's called a chosen instrument. Somebody who the Lord God is playing a song through that's in rhythm with what he's doing the chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings preaching the gospel of the grace of God and the sons of Israel preaching the kingdom for I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake and just read the stories of the Apostle Paul left under a pile led out of the city when he for preaching grace Led out of the city by kingdom Jews, people from from James, people that was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. They grab Paul, take him outside, say, You're preaching against the law of Moses. Because Peter, John, and James are under the law. Paul's Gentiles and the Jews among them, they're not. That's the big problem that Paul had. Paul they would stone Paul, strip him naked, and beat him with rocks. And leave him under a pile of rocks. And the only reason they left him was because they thought he was dead. That's how much that Paul had to suffer. You know, so, yeah, I'm suffering. And this is this kind of thing has happened before. There, there's a trail of this type of behavior. From being abused by people for preaching the truth. But Paul had it way worse than me. He had it way worse than any of us. It's comparable to Christ on the cross. But the thing to realize is that Paul is a type of our church in that he is a Pharisee, so he's a, he's a Jew, but he's also a Roman citizen. That is a Jew-Gentile body of Christ. And the suffering that he suffers is indicative of how we also suffer. It's not saying, you know, I, I'm not a, a, a Paulian, I'm a Christian. It's Christ's example. Christ's blood was shed so Paul could be saved and me too. But scripture even says that Paul, we might have a thousand tutors, but Paul became our father in Christ through the gospel. Because the gospel was given to him first. So everybody else that obeyed it goes through Paul as the steward. Just like everybody who received the, the law received it through Moses. Everybody that received the, the law received it through Moses. Same thing with the gospel doesn't make Paul any greater or any less than the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. But those that do not see the importance of Paul's gospel, those that are mixing everything together to create their own gospel, then this is the evidence of that. Where the truth makes me their heretic. And then they find reason, I'm not even going to go see what this uh, Jared guy wrote. Because it's probably going to be something that's not nice. And he's he's breaking all the rules. So so he says, it's a, a question of whether this qualifies. So he's he's uh you see what he's doing is he's 
he's calling me a heretic. But he's using his description in the third person here. So that is, oh, it's this. He's calling me a heretic is what he's doing. So I just say six and stones. These are ad hominem attacks. It's also straw man. When he's asking a question like that, that's what a straw, how a straw man argument is built. Is you just, instead of addressing what the person says, you just ask a question. You start answering your own question. Straw man. This guy's guilty of all, all the bad tricks in his very, in very few uh, little words. Then uh, the featured right here. See, the difference in what you're going to get up here, my clarifying statements, that's a battling debate against somebody else. The featured down here, this is where Galen, see, he's, he's a subscriber. He's reading my book, The Mystery Explained. And so then he has a question. And so here we go. We're going to answer this. And the um, without getting into everything, then Jesus Christ is conceived of the Holy Spirit, Matthew 1, 18 and 20. Conceived of the Holy Spirit. Conceived of the Holy Spirit. It's the same process, mystery process that we're looking in right here. The same process of, of heavens, heaven, and earth. The waters existed long ago. The heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and by water. Right? Second Peter? Right? Well, he's going back to Genesis 1, 6 through 8. Where you have the firmament, the expanse in the middle, which is heaven. And you have the waters above and the waters below. The waters above is the power from on high. The waters below is the Holy Spirit. The overlapping is when the Son is begotten. So, being conceived of the Holy Spirit takes no DNA from Mary nor Joseph, neither one of them. Not even one sliver of strand of DNA. He is from heaven above. John the Baptist is from the earth. We are from the earth, our bodies. But his skin, Christ, was different than anybody else that walked the earth. It was He's conceived of the Holy Spirit. And the, the similarities is going to be Melchizedek, who is even says that he is like the Son of Man, made, no genealogy, right? That's the way Christ is. It's, it's, you're going to see the genealogy of the assumed, of the supposed. That's how Scripture says that he's supposed the son of Joseph. But he's not. But that's how the fulfillment of the Scriptures came. Even though John the Baptist is the Messiah, John the Baptist was the Messiah they didn't recognize. So when Christ says that John already came, but they didn't recognize him, he didn't mean that they didn't recognize him as Elijah. He's telling them that he was Elijah. He's saying that you don't recognize him because Elijah and Abraham and David are all the same person. And he was just right here in John the Baptist, the one that they just murdered. That's what Christ is saying. And he's saying that he's coming again to restore all things as the prophet of Acts chapter 3. He's still coming. And he's going to be here to start the day of the Lord. Whenever we're taken, we're going to be delivered like a letter. In heaven, the Holy Spirit is going to have a change of administration. He's working with the body of Christ now. He's going to deliver us. He's done. He comes back. John the Baptist, just like, I mean, Elijah is going to be on the, the banks of the Jordan River. And he's going to be on the west side the Jordan River, the promised land being on the other side, and he's going to begin baptizing in water for the forgiveness of sins, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Not one word about Christ shed blood. Because he's gathered members of the late reigns kingdom bride. Okay. That's pretty much what I mean when you go through all the details here. Everything is laid out. See, see I've been writing a lot. Of, you get a lot more commentary in this, I really love helping members of Christ's body to see the truth of God's living word, see his hidden wisdom. It's one of my favorite things to do in life. And now you guys subscribing, supporting, and then sending me questions. This is uh, like a Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, whenever I have time, and uh, even on Mondays, and can get deep and go and get all the references and highlight and show you the ins and outs and the details. Really, uh, what you get from a tutor, whether it's a, on, for math, geometry, you know, English, history, or, in this case, in God's living word. And um, also, uh, Galen mentioned, just like Dina, that he likes Dr. Kim. 
and I did not get to watch one of his videos this week, but um, Galen also mentioned that he likes Dr. Kim too. And I'm more I'm seeing uh, there are some things off with uh, what Dr. Kim is doing, but there are things that he's doing good. There really are. So um, just thought I would mention that. Then here's the Christian debate. This is not topics that I started. This is me writing on somebody else's thread. Did the Apostle Paul err on occasion? This was written for Reformer. Here's the link. And the answer is going to, the answer is going to be no. But whenever you're trying to put the gospel of the kingdom in with the gospel of the grace of God, and you're trying to put our mystery church in with the kingdom church, you're going to create contradictions. There are things that are happening in the Bible you're not going to understand. So he was asked, um, Karen wrote him, and said, will you expound upon Paul's conduct in Acts 21 and 24, when he participated in the Jewish rites on occasion? He went up to Jerusalem to worship, as per the law of Moses. Just what is incorporated in his behavior, especially since the old law of Moses ended at the cross? Why did he participate? The thing you have to realize is what Paul wrote to the Corinthians is that he's all things to all men. That to the Jews, he's like a Jew. And remember that he was with Messianic Jews. If he's with Peter, John, and James, the Messianic Jews, they're under the law. He is not under the law because he's a member of Christ's body, but he is as under the law because he doesn't want to offend them. It's important to realize. So whenever Paul goes into Jerusalem, especially on a holy day, he's things he has to do and keep with the law. He has to because he's there to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Part of his ministry in his early ministry after Acts 28 28 28 60 61 AD he doesn't do that anymore because he realizes the futility of it and God sends him just to the Gentiles only so Israel the flesh Peter John and James the kingdom bride they're all under the law until heaven and earth passes away the Gentiles are not under the law even now members of Christ's body we're never under it <laughs> but we're under grace and not under law so you have different dispensations. The reason that these people writing on this board are asking these questions and seeking advice is because they don't see the different dispensations. They have it all mixed together. Which gives me great opportunity to go through. But then we got Jared, that Whitecliff guy. He wants to come behind and saw my head off. It's kind of interesting. And uh, I see that I missed quoting right here. But this is what is true for Israel. Do not think that I came... To this is in for Peter, John, and James. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, truly, whenever he says truly, I mean, he really means it. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then, uh, no, uh, that, that's house rules for Israel, the flesh, and the kingdom of right. House rules, different dispensation. It does not apply to us. It's in that water section part. For them, whoever knows the least of these commandments and whoever teaches others to do the same shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You see, notice they still get into heaven. But they're going to be called the least. This is a pecking order. There's a pecking order for the members of Christ's body and there's a pecking order for members of the kingdom bride too. Staying out there on that seat of, seat of glass. And James is writing kingdom doctrine. This is for people living during the day of the Lord that's coming. For whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles in one point, he's guilty of all. Look at the difference between what Paul would write to us and what James is writing to members of the kingdom bride. People that don't see the two dispensations have to solve the contradiction. There is no contradiction. There's only a seeming contradiction created by your ignorance. There, there is no contradiction in God's word. There's none. Once you understand the differences between eternal truth, that's for everybody, and dispensational truth for individual households. If that's too complicated for you, then you can't stand the heat. You don't need to be in the kitchen. So this is, a, I'm using this diagram a lot. It's the beginning of the book, The Mystery Explained, and this helps people to visualize the Bible as a living thing and where the veils are. Put the veils in the wrong place, messes you up. Are the 12 apostles in the body of Christ? This is from Dan. I know Dan from the Christian Bible Board. His posts also get thrown down into the sub-forum, just like mine do, because he's awake, he's aware, he sees the different dispensations that the people running that board do not see. You'll see me using this quite a lot. People don't realize the scriptures are laid out just like the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. 
once you see that, it is really a great thing. Then the articles that were sent in, David is like new. And uh, he's, he's requiring a little bit of training. And he was sick last week. And I've, I've been a lot sick, lot sick this week, but getting my, getting my work done. And um, my plan is to be at chat tonight at, over at uh, Pal Talk. So this is nearing midnight that, that, um, that David sent in. Is the U U.S. Constitution dead? And I um, thought well, this was pretty good to be able to share with you guys. Then uh, do earthquakes under the Sea of Galilee point to the end-time prophecy? So it's, see, it's more from a Christian perspective rather than from a science perspective. This was sent in by, and this made it into the newsletter at the last second. As Don sent this in, I, went, I was looking through, the, and there's some good things here. Now, we are not living in a prophetic period. I know people hate to hear that from me. We're living within a mystery period. But once you're mature, you can look at the end-time events, and you can see the soul manifestation of them today. So this is not going to be literal, but there is some value to it for those that are mature. So I wanted to add this, and this gives you access to a lot of, uh, you know, different stories of what's going on. This is not my interpretation. This is what they're showing in this prophecy update newsletter. Now, like I said, the pre-trib. If you're connecting the tribu Great Tribulation to our gathering, you're 3,600 years off. But that's the difference between what Paul calls sound doctrine, that we take directly from Pauline epistles, and what's being sold today as dogma, made, created by, by those blinded by denominationalism. And of course, everybody can point to me and, and make the same accusation. You decide who your tutor is. You be diligent. Make the right decision. Of course, I have a biased opinion. But once you see the three witnesses, that's the difference. Because it helps the Bible to interpret, to interpret itself. Whenever you realize where the veils are, and it's a living thing. We may have uh, gravely underestimated the threat of the dead zones of the world's oceans. This is uh, the signs of the times. The black star is going to be here not too long. And the the... In my commentary up above, then, the thing that I'm noticing is, when I'm going to these, web I got banned from three websites. Two of them I was a member of since 2004. Right? And all of a sudden, I repost the same thing. That was been fine all this time, and now I get banned. And why would somebody do that? Now, I'm being, Jared, in this board, I've been a member since 2006. He's doing this, this type of thing, what I'm getting at, wouldn't have happened a decade and a half ago. Now, as the black star gets closer, we're getting more and more of this uh, darkness. It's raising its ugly head. It's like uh, Pelosi on steroids trying to impeach Trump, who did nothing. Nothing. But she wants him impeached anyway. To, to, to keep the radical left happy. Even though he didn't do anything wrong, release the transcript. That kind of blew a hole in their operation. And um, any, So I, I, there's a similarity there. The geopolitical environment what's happening out there and what they're trying to do the president you see the similar things happening in uh, london in england where i used to live and in you, you're, you're going to see some stuff from the british newspapers in creeping up in here i have kind of connection there because i live there and a a uh, right wing conservative has just taken over over there from the lefties the labor and they get they just got murdered and that's what's going to happen this november watch and see the gavel, Pelosi's gavel is coming back to the house. It's going to happen. We'll see how many of these uh, Democrats get, get ejected because of the stupidity that they're about to do in this uh, vote that they're talking about. Here it is. UK politicians uh, don't, don't do God, but religious matters um, in this election. So this is kind of from a Christian perspective and giving you the, the, uh, showing you the slants, the different angles. That people are going to be um, coming from here in the future. Then uh, here at the end, the chat, the um, the plans are to do my mystery. This is just laying out the plans in the chat room environment. And so whenever you subscribe to the newsletter program, to the tutor program, I should say, then you're going to get instructions on chat, where to go, where to register, sign up. And that, remember, that's every Tuesday night, 7 to 9. Eastern time. 
And my apologies, it looked like it was just me and John last week, and I wasn't feeling that great. I'm not feeling that great this week. I'm a little bit overworked this week. But um, it looked like it was just going to be me and John, and then I thought other people were coming in. I didn't know that Galen was was one of the one of the pal one of the pal talkers. And then the questions started flying, and I didn't hit the record button. So in the future, like the one tonight, then my plan is to record it, and then that is um, that's going to be a uh, video recording of the you know then I'll maybe uh. Uh, do some editing, you know, to streamline it some. But then that is going to be showing up in a section in here so for subscribers. So it's going to be recorded in the inside chat room, you know, our personal deliberations back and forth, the tutors, the tutoring that's going on. Then um, you're going to have to be a newsletter supporter. It's only two bucks a month. And then you're going to have a big link that says chat. It'll be up in this box right here. So you, we should get 04. Um, radio presentation that I did back in 2012 and then you'll see more inf things showing up in here and one of those will be previous week's chat so if you miss it then you can click on it you know and get to it but it's going to look like these it's not going to be a link it's going to be embedded link and it's going to be in the newsletter so that whenever let's John or David or Dr. Laura when you download this newsletter the PDF then you can you can send that newsletter to anybody that you want to and they'll be able to access those things so it makes it what the goal is to make this a, a, a valuable document that has the arguments has all the links to send you around and it's just ha it's just going to be packed full of doctrinal information getting the gospels right and question and answers debates and things like that so it's um that's what i have to share with you guys for this week the um for the mystery report, this link goes right there. And um, appreciate you guys' support. Please share this video uh, with other people. And let's try to get the numbers up here at the new YouTube channel. And um, appreciate your... Um, during the week, I, my plan is to do more special report interviews. You know, going through the holidays and just getting this program going. And the problems that I've had on these web... On these... Christian forum boards, getting banned and having and having to start over and links having to change links and and all kinds of things going on. It's it's taking a lot of my time, so this is going to become more streamlined. And the communication between myself and David on articles and everything is going to get easier and easier. These reports are likely going to become shorter and shorter. You know, just under an hour instead of over an hour now. There won't be. It was just all brand new. Everything's brand new. Where the website is for discussion where the um, where to go for chat and things like that so appreciate you guys support very very much and I will uh, I will see you on the uh, special report during the week if it's needed and then if not I'll see you on the next um, update report coming out next Tuesday get more information that's the wrong page I'd like to show you right here more information right here at the website. And if you're a member of the Survival Group program and you're watching this, then you want, might want to check out some of these. This, a lot of this is new, and a lot, and a lot of it's really good deals. These uh, mini rechargeable flashlights and things like that help to help you to get the things you need for your Survival Group program, and it helps the uh, Project Black Star investigation. So thank you again. Appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the next um, mystery report update.